A newly released report indicates nearly half of America's honeybee colonies collapsed last year. And in years past, we've heard plenty about the decline of the bee population. So where do things stand now after this newest report? Well, our Leah Bino talked to some experts to find out. Yeah, these are really good native pollinator. Giving us a tour plants. of her South Minneapolis backyard bee haven, Terry McDaniel is a beekeeper, advocate, and board member of the Minnesota Hobby Beekeepers Association. This is a veil. Yeah. She knows firsthand, just like her worker bees, keeping a hive alive isn't easy. I have bee losses at, at least 30% each year, sometimes more. To help regain what she loses, Terry is also part of a small army of volunteers on the local capture team. All the bees in the air and the ground will go to where the queen is. This natural process of a swarm of tens of thousands of bees on the move is a good thing and in part an indication the hive is healthy enough to reproduce. It's not a question of if honeybees are, you know, declining or going extinct. That is not a concern here. It's really a, a more of an issue of can beekeeper stay sustainable? According to Natalie Steinhauer and a new study conducted by the national nonprofit Be Informed, nearly half of colonies collapsed last year. However, for honeybees, it's not quite as bad as it sounds. Through studying commercial and amateur colonies, since 2007, researchers believe colony loss really should be looked at as mortality rate, not population loss. The same time frame as the survey, so those last 16 years, um, the, the population has been relatively stable, about at 2.6 to 2.7 million honeybees uh, colonies in the, in the country. Um, and so basically the idea is that we, are, we have a stable population despite the high mortality rates. Honeybees are like cattle, you know, they're managed, so we can count those. As Lori Schneider, executive director of the Pollinator Friendly Alliance, points out, that's all good for the honeybees. But it's the native bees or wild bees away from well-fed backyards she's concerned about. Impacts of the drought, wildfires, various pollutants in the environment are unknown at this point. We're just starting to get a handle on all that. So actually nationally, we don't know how many wild bees there are today compared to like two years ago or 10 years ago. We do know, however, that of those 500 species, at least about 40 of those species are no longer seen. We haven't seen them in over 10 years, so they're probably extinct. For now, Schneider and other advocates are celebrating the Highways for Habitats bill passing through Minnesota's legislative session, basically mandating MnDOT to move away from simply mowing more grass along our interstates and moving toward what Iowa and a handful of other states have developed for years, miles of well-established flowering plants adding to the healthy food menu for bees and other insects. It's a million dollars, um, and that's just enough to get sort of the program started. So we're hoping that we can build on that in future years. Here in Washington County's Pine Park, 13 acres have been transformed from a cornfield to pollinator-friendly plants. Advocates hope these efforts are just the beginning, as the bees play a critical yet delicate role to ultimately feeding the rest of us. If people could just plant more native plants and feed the insects, we're just gonna be so much better off. Leah Bino, Fox 9.